Alrighty, welcome to the um, Asia Pacific Chaos Community Call Meeting. If you could add yourself, that would be wonderful. Tell us maybe how you're doing today or any activity that you have done today, like swimming, which is a good addition. I have, I ran and biked. Dishes. <laughs> <laughs> there is arm movement in that. <laughs> Actually, I put them in the dishwasher, so I don't even think that really counts. <laughs> well, <it's> funny. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so let's see. Um, we have something here at the top. I'll share my screen. So we have uh, different levels of dis developers corresponding to different operating strategies. I did not put this in there. Do you, does anybody I, know? I think that you enjoy June. Hi, hi. Uh, hi base. I, I put this. Okay, great. If you want to talk about it a little bit, that would be great. Okay. I'm sorry for a little late. And you want to share I your screen, share my too? screen? Oh yeah, hold on just a second. Yep. I will stop and then I will make you a co-host. Okay, you should be able to share your screen now. Okay. <clears throat> okay, you can see. Yep. Yeah, just just one one page. And we we have to um the question is uh, and the different levels of uh, developers. And we have uh, different uh, operating strategies. So we try to define, <clears throat> we try to define a um, developer's role. So um, you can see this, this from um, Peter, Peter Gay. <clears throat> so they define the three levels of the developer, developer developers about core, regular and choreo. So <clears throat> we also have uh, in, in our open UNER community, we have our own defined about uh, the de deployer. So we defined it uh, uh, D0, D1, D2, and we try to uh, <clears throat> define um, define this uh, uh, deployer to find out uh, which people do which things, so we can um, we can figure out so uh, what is the com conversion conversion rate from such as uh, conversion rate from D zero to D1 or D1 to D2, like this. So this is our defined. When we defined uh, the D2, it means uh, code contributor. And uh, it means uh, developers who merged PR. This is our defined about this. So could we just could we put those things in chaos metric? Um, maybe it is an example or something else like like uh, Bitger. They also have their defined. So the question is, uh, uh, is this uh, suitable for <clears throat> put it on chaos? as an example, <clears throat> or yeah. the second question is, uh, um, is it correct or it is uh, um, to define this like this? So that we, I have two questions about, about this. Sure. Um, so first, thank you for sharing <laughs> this. This is really great. Um, so the first question with respect to how could we bring this forward in the chaos community? Well, yeah. I mean, yes or no, the answer is of course, yeah. yes. 
Yeah. I was thinking two, two things and other people can chime in. One would be perhaps a blog post, which would be a very simple way of just kind of almost just taking this picture that you have here and just kind of talking, almost just talking through what you just said <laughs> to help people understand what it is that you're doing. Um, the second is with respect to a metric, I think you had mentioned conversion rate between contributors. Is that right? So you're interested in how developers move between D0, D1, and D2. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I think a, a really interesting metric would be conversion rate. So that would be the metric kind of at the highest level called like developer conversion rate or something like that. Um, and the goal of the metric is to identify, right, how contributors to a project uh, move between different roles, contribution roles within a project. Um, you know, we'd have to kind of identify a few things like what the, the objective of the, the metric is, like why you would want to care about something like this. You know what I mean? So, um, but we could easily do that. Um, and it sounds like you have deployed this in Grimoire Lab through a dashboard. Is that correct? I think, uh, I think uh, Jun have their own uh, platform to do the Okay, lab. gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so it has been deployed in some form or fashion, but um, so, so personally, I think a, a metric is quite reasonable um, in that regard. I'm trying to think of, it probably is an ev evolution working group metric. So evolution oftentimes looks at just kind of how projects evolve over time. Um, so I'll stop there and see if other people have comments. So we have to, we have to put a talk and, and we have to explain why we do this first. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we have to put our visual uh, yeah. in this talk. Yes, okay. Yeah, I'll show you, I'll give you an example here. Um, okay. <clears throat> So give me just a second. Um, here, I'll share my, uh, you have your screen up. Um, so, can you stop sharing your screen for a second? I was gonna share my screen. Do, do you think which which chaos metric is? So um, the yeah, so the way that the way that we do the metrics is evolution is a is a working group. Okay. And so basically our our linking art isn't working right now, but our we have different focus areas within the chaos project. So common metrics, diversity, equity, and inclusion metrics evolution, risk, and value. So we, can, we kind of categorize our metrics at the highest level around these different focus areas or within these different areas. And then within each one, we have particular focus areas. So I'll go down to evolution. We have a focus area around code development activity. And then we have specific metrics that help better understand code development activity. And so what you were talking about, I had put as um, like the metric I think would be called conversion rate. Okay. That would be the metric. And I'm not quite sure where it would fit. Um, code development process, issue resolution, maybe community growth. Because this is kind of about the people. So this is kind of a, a community related metric. And so like we have a metric called inactive contributors and we just, we follow a template like this. So a description, what is, it, what is this metric? So we're interested in how people move between different development um, yeah. roles or profiles. The objective, whatever the objective might be for wanting to see this, like why do you care about people moving between roles? Um, how you would go about implementing such a metric, which I think you talk about 
you know, when you talked about those roles, the different things that you're looking at for the different types of roles. So this is how you kind of implement this. Um, and then the different, this is fairly short metric, but the different data collection strategies that you would use um, to capture that data. And so it's just a, it's just really a, a way to help people who aren't familiar with the metric that you're talking about, um, just understand kind of the, the definition of that metric. Does that help? Yeah, really helps. And I can. I think we have coverage for for the metrics. Say that again, Yohei. I, I mean, I think we have a metrics template to help. Oh, we do. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yep. So let me track that down too. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Matt, while you're doing that, um, I just yeah. want to make a quick comment. The Drupal community, Drupal, D-R-U-P-A-L, um, they had developed a pretty detailed list of potential roles within their project. I mean, they went even so far as to say, you know, this person works on like the social media team for the project, you know, so they have a very, very detailed list. And this would fit in great with that. Uh, with this metric that we're, we're talking about. And I think it also kind of touches on um, what we were talking about yesterday in the metrics model group about the, the events, tracking even someone that just attends an event that your project is about, and then at, like watching their journey across to make them a contributor. Like how does that journey go from even just, you know, starting out as an attendee in an event and like bringing them forward all the way across. So um, I think this is a really, really great metric. June, thank you so much for bringing this up. This is awesome. Thanks. It's my play. You got a second question too. What was the second question? Do <laughs> <clears throat> you remember? I. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all forget. <clears throat> okay, you can think about it. I was yeah. thinking maybe okay. Elizabeth, too, from a timing perspective, because of the, I mean, it's something that perhaps, like, maybe not right today, but we could start working on such a metric here. You know what I mean? If, if June has an interest. Because um, oftentimes we just spend a little bit of time as a group of people just working in the document collaboratively so that you don't have to do all the work by yourself. We can do it as a group. Um, and then as it kind of kind of formalizes, we could bring it to the evolution working group. And just because I think the timing of that working group is even later for you all <laughs> right now in the day. So we could do the work yeah. here and bring it there. <clears throat> All right, so let's So I, I'm going to suggest we could work on this as a group. And Junior, I mean, if you want to, did you see the metrics template that I posted? Yeah, I see. I see metric okay. templates. OK. And um, I, maybe I could uh, submit a pull request. Actually, the, the easiest way to do it is probably let's just start in a shared document. Okay, just and a then, shared document. Yeah, so just start a, some document that we could all work on next week. So like whether it's SharePoint, I could set one up that SharePoint, this seems to work for everybody on this call. Yeah, um, yeah that might be easier. <laughs> okay, why don't I, I'll do that right at the end of this meeting and then I'll, or I can kind of do it while we talk about other things. But I'll start a document June and then I'll give you access okay. or give everybody access and then you can start putting your thoughts in there. Okay. Oh, I, I, I remember what I second the question. <laughs> the second question is, um, is it correct? Do you think um, my defined it? Is it? <clears throat> yeah, and I think in terms of like defining the the people, I think Elizabeth's point was really good that the Drupal community can help in that regard too. Um, personally, I so a lot of these metrics are just to kind of help um, like locate people <laughs> in a particular way of thinking about their communities and the way that 
Don may think about her communities and the way that Yehui might think about his communities, they're probably going to be a little bit different. So there is no like universal truth or correct way of thinking about it. Um, but a metric like, um, what was it called again? Um, conversion rate for contributors, like that might be something that that folks at VMware might care about in a, in a particular way. And they might define the parameters a little bit different than the way that say folks at, at Huawei may think about it and define the parameters a little bit different. And so we're okay with that, that kind of way. I think it's more or less related to the bus factor. So to identify some co-contributor. So it is, so right. And different, different organizations are more comfortable with different, different bus factors. And yeah. we don't provide a perfect answer on what that might be. Okay. Got it. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that forward. All right. Um, let's see. I just, Kevin, I'm so glad you joined our resident metrics release person. Um, Hello. Hi. <laughs> so I just want to make a note that the metrics release uh the the freeze for the metrics for this next round is going to be at the end of this month so kevin do you have any comments that you just want to say on on that at all uh just that we are uh so the the process has been uh kind of emerging uh around uh the release and how we're going to connect it to the translations uh so we've we've just uh We've just kind of ironed out some of the, uh, the the work group checklists. So this week we are going through and we are, <coughs> pardon me, we're adding a, a checklist document to each working group. Uh, and following that, we sh we're going to go through and we're going to make sure that all of the newly released metrics have an issue created for them in the translations repo. Uh, so you should be seeing you should be seeing some new issues popping up in that translations repo. Yeah, I think at the moment, only the common working group has been placing issues in the translations repo saying, you know, we finished a metric that's ready for release. Here's, here's a link yeah. to the metric. I think for the, all the issues pop up from the comment, I have will give some response and only two uh, issues I haven't uh, got time to do it, but uh, I think I, I I will have a I will finish the uh, next week at most. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. Kevin. I think that's plenty of time. Just because we have the freeze and then we have a month until the actual release happens. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so we do have a right now. We have a total of eight metrics that have been released by the working groups, and I think we have. I think four of those have issues. I, uh, I didn't say that so far. I'm sorry? Only from, I, I, I haven't said any other uh, issue, uh, any other metrics from, uh, except for, except a common working group. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's what I was just saying. So the, yeah. the on our, on our side, the working groups have released eight metrics. However, we have only created four four issues. So you have, there are four more that we need to create right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I can tell you, I can tell you also that the, uh, a few of the working groups are going to be pushing some metrics out at the last moment. Okay. So we can probably expect uh, two to four new metrics before the release freeze. Uh, so this this release will probably release a total of around 12 metrics. Okay. So, and I will, I will do my best to get those issues created for you as soon as possible. Uh, so you have a little more uh, time to, to yeah. peek at them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just merged Matt's bot metric for the common working group. So we, we can create the issue, translation issue for that one as well. Okay, I can do that. We still, are we still missing one? From common, yes. Yeah, there's okay, a... but that's the one you're going to add, right, Kevin? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then I know uh, risk, risk will end up having 
uh, a couple as well. I think risk we have some new metric, only one new metric about uh, upstream code dependencies. That's the only one I saw that. And uh, I have finished my, my translation and waiting for the review. But recently, uh, my colleague and my friends looks kind of busy. So I need fun time, uh, letting fun time to help me review them. Excellent. Uh, well, th thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so we, we all really appreciate the work you're, you're doing on the, the translations. I don't think it's really hard work. I really enjoy that, actually. Don't know why. Yes, thank you. Even if it's not hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and you enjoy it. <laughs> so thank you. All right, I am, I've made the conversion rate. Hold on just a second. Um, can edit. Let's see. Give me a second here. trying to get that conversion rate metric done. SharePoint is not as, <laughs> I don't, it's just, no, no. I'll add that to the spreadsheet. Thank you. I don't know why I can't, oh, anyone with the link, sorry. Apply, edit, copy, Okay, so I'm going to put in the chat and I'll put it in the minutes too. So that you should be able to get access to that metric now. June, you can try it out. I can open that. Jun, you are muted. Yeah. Try, try what? I just put a link. A, this yeah. is on chat. I put a link in the chat for the metric that we can talk about next week. It's also in the minutes. Okay. Okay. Yep, I see people in there. So good. Yay. Um, great. Let's see a few other things. Um, just to just as a note, we have a new uh, chaos privacy policy. So we've been working well, like we started the work a year ago. I was going to say we've been working for, on this for a year, but that's not true. <laughs> we started the work a year ago, and um, recently Steve Winslow at the Linux Foundation kind of gave it a review and added a few comments that are in line with the LF uh, policy. And so it's it was approved, Steve thought it looked good. And we now, and so this policy is, um, it describes what we as the chaos project do with the data that we collect. And Steve thought it was appropriate that the chaos project has its own data policy that's somewhat independent from the Linux foundation, just because we're kind of in this world of collecting data and thinking about. So I thought it was a good, yeah. a good, good way to think about things. Um, the second thing that we're gonna be doing uh, is now creating kind of uh, data guidance probably for people who use tools like Grimoire Lab or use tools like Augur. Mm -hmm. um, we can't have a policy clearly, but we can at least have guidance. Like as you're collecting this data, here are the bounds that you probably wanna think about as you're collecting that data, particularly with, with laws both here domestically in the United States and internationally having a pretty big impact, not pretty big, but having a big impact on what we can and can't do uh, with data. Actually, I have a question mm -hmm. uh, Matt. So this privacy policy, it means that it's an auger and uh, chaos, the service provided by those tools. 
they have to uh, they have to follow this policy. And, and uh, in some scenario, like um, some some community, they they download and uh, deploy their own auger and green lab in their own green lab, uh, community. Does that mean they have to follow this privacy? No. Okay. No, it's just it's just only for our community. But then the okay. second document would be for the people who are installing their own version of Grimoire Lab or Augur, it would be guidance. We would say, here are things that as you're deploying these, you might want to think about, like how you store the data, how you represent the data, how you think about personal identifiable information, just those kind of things. But it's, it's more just to, to help people along. So I'm happy to have that done. Yay. I noticed, at the, I noticed at the bottom that the contact person is um, is Elizabeth, which is great. But um, so I'll be honest, like at VMware, we had a key person who was the contact person for everything, yeah. leave our group and go to another group. And it has been painful to kind of scrub that. I wonder if there's like a, we could create like a community contact alias, like an alias email that goes right. to Elizabeth. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just I'm just thinking long term. It's better to have some aliases for things like that than just than like a direct like, email. Yeah, than going to a person. Yeah, we could. Um, Not I that Elizabeth that, is going to stay with us forever, which is, is what I hope. Leave. But she's under a hundred year contract. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have like we have such an alias for um, code of conduct. Mm -hmm violations and then we just manage the people that receive that so i can i can just reach out to brian warner and really easily set up a chaos what do you think like um what what do you think the alias should be data policy complaints <laughs> at chaos.community you know we can set it up for whatever we want i would think about where else we're using um elizabeth as the contact person i don't know if there are other instances i mean maybe it's maybe it's something more general that's just oh, like, like like a contact us at gotcha and we can use it for a bunch of stuff we don't necessarily need to create individual ones for all of gotcha. these code of conduct is different you have to have a separate one for that but i'm thinking just some sort of maybe generic oh, contact that's a good idea we do have the um like a general uh chaos community gmail account that several of us have access to, but I don't ever check that. Do you, Matt? No, I can. I like the idea of having the LF set up this through the yeah. I can manage that a lot better, just in terms of who's on that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Great. Um, all right. So I was I was curious if um, are people going to be attending. OSSNA, it, I mean, we're getting sort of close. Like, uh, it's remote, remotely, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, remotely, that's that's good. Or ChaosCon as well. I mean, we have ChaosCon, which is September 30th. It is in the morning. So it, it starts at eight, nine, I kind of forget. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's nine, but that's Pacific time. Oh yeah, it is. That's going to be a lot harder. Yeah, nine is okay. Nine. Will... That'll be midnight, I nine. think, your time. We will be live streaming that event. However, we're we're also going to be having a uh, a follow up kind of virtual event that'll that we, we don't have the details of that yet. Already. And so one of the thoughts is, is that we would have, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, and Don too, or, or Elizabeth, um, that we would have um, recorded videos for some of the present. We record everything. So it'll be live streamed and fully recorded. But then we would also have sessions where, like if I recorded a presentation, I would be available to answer questions at a particular time when the presentation airs, is that right, Kevin? Uh, yes, yes. So the the virtual event would be would be disconnected from the in person event, and we would we would spread it out over possibly a week or two, and have yeah basically question and answer sessions and maybe some uh, panel discussions that could uh, 
could kind of happen live. Uh, but those, the virtual event has not been planned yet. We just know that we need to collect. We know that we need to record all of the presentations for the in-person event. And then we also know that uh, uh, any, anyone who has submitted a, a, a presentation, uh, and if they won't be able to be there in person, we're asking them to record their presentation so that we can show it at the virtual event. It makes me think maybe we should consider like if we sh if we have a time where we play the video and have the, the presenter also available live, we could be considerably friendlier to the Asia Pacific region. We have already some schedule on to say the topics and uh, how it uh, uh, what the content and of those topics okay. present in the in the chaos. Okay, in some notes here. Okay. The, the last thing that I have, um, did anybody else have anything on events or anything like that? Okay. Um, the last thing is, I just wanted to to briefly relive the metrics model discussion because my brain is still <laughs> reassembling from our discussion of personas, use cases, <laughs> metrics, <laughs> models, metrics. I'm, I don't know. Um, so, so we we were. I know a number of us were on the call, but we were thinking about, right, how to bring metrics forward in, in models that could be useful to individuals, not just kind of the individual metric, you know, like age of issue could be useful, sure, but kind of how a collection of metrics might be useful for a community manager, it could be useful for, um, you know, an organization that is releasing open sources is, or IP is open source, something like that, Some whatever the scenarios might be. Um, and the app ecosystem, we were kind of trying to connect with the app ecosystem work. Their work is considerably more top-down. So they kind of think of the goals that they may want to accomplish, say for an event, like thinking about metrics associated with an event. Um, and as a result, they, to adjust the goal, they kind of come up with metrics that may or may not exist in the chaos project. So the metrics in, in their scenario are a bit more hypothetical than I think what we were thinking about. So I, from the metrics model discussion, we were basically saying of the whatever 50 or 60 metrics we have in chaos that currently exist and are hopefully deployable in some way, how do we bring those together in ways that are meaningful so we could actually tool you know, use Augur or Grimoire Lab to actually show these metrics models. So again, the, the app ecosystem is a little bit different because a lot of the metrics that they talk about don't exist yet. There's, they don't, we don't have metrics for them. We haven't written the markdown for them. They were just kind of thinking about the goal and imagining metrics that could help inform that goal, which is actually kind of how we build metrics anyway. Um, and so this is kind of the opposite. So. Um, we, I'll, I'll pull up the, um, the metric spreadsheet. Give me a second here. Um, so I'll share my screen. Okay, so just on the metric spreadsheet, we've been thinking about, we're trying to think about how to organize the metrics models. And we had a, a long and winding discussion <laughs> about personas and use cases and other things. And um, I think we're still working it out, <laughs> but the metrics models, we, we'd like to start capturing them probably as part of the release cycle. Um, and here's kind of our, where we're at right now just in terms of structure of metrics model. So for example, we would have focus areas where metrics models could live. And a metrics model is kind of what you would imagine, like a, a visual of how metrics are brought together. 
operations, governance, development, community engagement, and infrastructure. And one of the contentions, just as a landing spot, was that the DEI badging program is actually a metrics model, right? That it's bringing together a handful of metrics in a way that's useful for event organizers. And so that would be a metrics model that is available for community engagement. I'm gonna stop there for a second and <laughs> see if Kevin or Yehoi or Elizabeth have comments on what I'm saying so far. Good so far. I feel like I'm, I'm walking I'm, uh, shells. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I wanna say anything. <laughs> you can say, you can if it's if <laughs> it is um like super clear <laughs> go ahead all right are you gonna say anything uh I would I would just say that uh, I think we're on the right track here, and I, I think the uh, how we how we structure the the models in relationship to each other is going to emerge as we continue. But I, I think I think we're on the right track with starting with the uh, the the way we are developing these models now, or the way that we're thinking about these models now. Okay, so. Uh, I think the, the one thing we need to probably resolve at this point is a kind of a common, simple structure to present these existing models. I agree. Uh, I agree with that. We didn't really get to that yesterday. Yeah. That was like, because the app ecosystem uses text. And I like the the one that um, I think I do think it was Yehoi that brought forward was a visual. And I, I connected with the visual, that PowerPoint one that developed, it was a more of a flow chart, but that, like I really connected with that really well. And so I, I prefer kind of a visual model. Um, uh, as, I, as I said, as I've said prior, I think, there's, I think there's room for different kinds of representations of the models. And I, I, I think text-based models are going to be very helpful for us. Uh, but the I, part of the problem is the is the complexity of using a bunch of different types of models right now, and I think that's I think that's where we're kind of getting hung up in our discussion. So uh, it might be best to just start with a, a very plain, simple text-based model, and then move and then move on from that text-based model to to more complex uh, visual representations of the model. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the what we're doing, at least in terms of, from what I understand, is the next steps forward for the metrics model working group is I trying to identify existing models, so things that may already be in practice. Sean has mentioned this in his work with Augur that there are already models where metrics are being drawn together. And if we can capture that, that's probably the best way to start. I think you were alluding to this, Kevin. And then we worry about like, is this an issue of governance? Is this an issue of operations? Is this an issue of, of development? Like, where does it fit? So it's a little bit different. Um, actually, it's not, actually, it's not, actually not that different from how we develop metrics. We kind of develop a metric and then we're like, all right, where does they, because we just did that here today. We're like, this seems like it fits in evolution. You know what I mean? Like we had a metric and it seems like we found a home for it. Um, so that, I think that's that's the approach we're taking now is identifying the existing metrics models and then kind of like working them into to a structure. I'll just say again, like I said yesterday, we, we have to err on the side of simplicity because if we want people to, to be able to look at these and understand where they are and locate themselves in relation to a metrics model. It has to be very, very simple. Um, so I'm seeing Don nod, which makes me feel good. <laughs> As someone who's tried to roll out the Grimoire Labs dashboards to lots of people, um, complexity is not your friend. People just, if people don't understand it, they won't use it. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, great. 
So that's that was the discussion. You can the link there is is heading over to the metrics model working group. We've met twice, and so that's really cool. I think we've actually made a lot of progress in a in a relatively short period of time, which is great. Um, cool. So we are gonna we are gonna have a next um, metrics model meeting two weeks later, right? No, it's it's at, we're gonna have one in a week, and then okay. and then it'll be two weeks after that. So we'll meet again in in six days. And I don't want to say it again too shortly. <laughs> we'll meet in six <laughs> days. <laughs> and then it'll move to two weeks, just so it'll be off. It'll be okay. every, Asia Pacific call will be one week, and then the metrics model meeting will be the next week. And so we'll just kind of, hmm. those will be yeah. off cadence with each other. Cool. That's good. All right. Uh, I am done with content, everybody. This was. Good. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring forward today or share or anything like that? Or questions that you might have? All right. If not, you, you're, you can leave the building. Okay. <laughs> Finally. 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 After, after 14 hours. Yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> so long. <laughs> All right, everyone. Got in a swim, though. What's that, Don? I'm sorry. I said at least you got in a swim. That's good. That is true. That is very, very true. <laughs> All right, folks. It's good to see everybody. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.